And now one last example where we don't have either equation solved for x or solved for y. I said at the beginning of this video that it is required for substitution method that we see an equation that is solved for x or solved for y. And if we don't have one, there are a couple of options. One is that we choose an equation and we solve for x or solve for y, then proceed as usual. Or we use an alternate method. We don't do substitution method at all. We do the addition or elimination method. So if I see a problem like this, personally, I would probably choose to do the addition or elimination method. But just to still stick on our substitution method and to tell you how you would approach a problem like this, we'll go ahead and solve for y or x. We'll talk about choosing that, and then we'll finish up with substitution. So any thoughts about which of these equations we should pick to work with, and if we should be working to solve for x or to solve for y? And this guy is pointing really at the biggest clue already. We should spot some variable that doesn't have a coefficient currently. Any of those will be the easiest to try to isolate in an equation, to try to solve for. So this y right here is telling me, choose this equation and solve for y. It's going to be easier than trying to isolate that x because it has a coefficient of 3. That x has a coefficient of 2. This y has a coefficient of negative 3. So here's the one saying, solve for me, solve for me. So let's take that equation. 3x plus y equals 7. Just bring it over here. I'm recopying to give myself some space for this process. Solving for y means clear any other terms from that side of the equation. So the 3x has to go. I'll take away 3x from both sides. That's leaving the y isolated on the left side. On the right side, we have two terms that are not like terms. So please refrain from thinking I can do 7 minus 3 and have 4 of something down here. Absolutely not. We cannot do that because this is a term that has a variable. It's negative 3x. It cannot be combined with a number by itself. So if you're used to, if you just came from doing a lot of graphing and you've done a lot of solving for y, you might still be in the habit of putting your x term first and the constant last, thinking I want to get it in a y equals mx plus b form. And if that's your thinking, you should see y equals negative 3x plus 7, because that's a positive 7. The other way to see it would be, oh, I see 7 minus 3x. I know they're not like terms, so I'll just call it 7 minus 3x. That's A-OK -okay also. Both ways are just fine. We're not graphing, so I'm not compelled to try to put that x term first. Either way, we're good to go because we have the same components. They both are a positive 7 and a negative 3x. So order, either order is going to be just fine. So now let's recollect ourselves and see we do have an equation that is solved for y and we'll need to take this expression and substitute it in place of y into our other equation so we're needing to substitute it into the y right there and let's make some space and carefully recopy 2x minus 3 times in place of y I'll go ahead and use the 7 minus 3x equals 4 now we have a careful distribute because we have a negative 3 coefficient. So 2x minus 21, and then the negative 3 times negative 3x will make a positive 9x equals 4. Careful with the distribute there. Now like terms, 2x plus 9x equals 11x. Bring down minus 21 equals 4. And we're just going to wrap this one up, add 21 to both sides, 11x equals 25. Then divide both sides by 11. Won't divide evenly, so I've got this improper fraction. It's simplified 25 over 11, and it's looking exactly the way I want it to look, a simplified improper fraction. Now let's wrap up getting the y value. We need to put 25 over 11 in place of this x right here. So y equals 7 minus 3 times x, 25 over 11. Careful order of operation, so let's do the multiply, negative 3 times the 25 in the numerator. That takes us to y equals 7 minus 75 over 11. To get a common denominator, I'm multiplying 7 by 11 over 11 equals 77 over 11. And now we can do a subtract to equal, it should be a positive right there, 
two elevenths. So I'm going to put that guy, hide the negative sign, and that's a positive two elevenths. So we have our value for x, and we have our value for y.